we all look at the charts in different ways, for sure. But what the chart shows us is the same. There is no difference. XRP here shows you a bullish divergence. The price is going down, but the buying strength is increasing. So even though the price is going down, someone is buying more and more of it. Now that's visible in XRP USD terms. If you do go to XRP Bitcoin, you're looking at a historical range all the way from 2017, 2021. Whenever you hit that region and bounce off, what has happened in the market is a decent ROI structure. I'm not saying a thousand X. At least a 10 to 50 X is a range which looks beautiful. Now, if you take that concept into the XRP dominance, again, you are watching something like what we have seen in the past, the history. You put that on a shorter horizon on XRP to Ether to see whether XRP and the altcoin market running, does it actually kind of gives us this, give us the same story? If it does, at that point, we are like, okay, what would be or what should be the first range of resistance when this actually goes up? This becomes an important aspect. So XRP against Ether, it's showing you XRP should overtake Ether, at least on the shorter horizon. When Ether runs up, say 20%, XRP should run up 40 So you'll actually see slow gain where XRP is going to gain against Ether. And that's a huge scenario because the market is about to show you a lot of interesting things. When there is short-term volatility, people panic, but you don't have to. Once you understand the market structure and what the market itself is doing, if you panic, you'll have to look at the real numbers. Who, who is doing what? That's important. You're watching ARK buying like 76 million worth of Bitcoin. You are watching Grayscale again, slowly increasing their Bitcoin, not dumping, increasing. That's positive. And you're looking at a lot of different institutions again, buying into this asset class. Now, whether they are looking at this asset as a store of value or a payment mechanism, that doesn't matter because right now, governments are spending money like crazy. The deficit, deficits are going through the sky. So we all know they're going to spend this much and the debt servicing cost is through the sky, which all takes us back to the crypto market where we will see the price reflecting the real value in this economy. Welcome to the Sanofic Investor Family, where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10% of this world. Back in the day, which is like, you know, a month back, not even a month, we highlighted the fact that, guys, there should be a 53% to the downside coming in. And that's just the average of history, right? That's just the average, you know, it's not magic. And that 53%, when I showed you, the price was still holding on to this level of support. So you can actually argue that the price may bounce off from there. It may not drop till this point. Why would you say that? I'm like, the historical average shows it should drop more. And the RSI agrees with it. So I'm like, who am I to say it's going to bounce off from this support when the historical average, the RSI, shows me it can drop. That was the reason why the SI family was alerted about this. Now that was through a lot of different assets and that was like fifth asset which I posted there. And we went through how much? I think 30, 35 assets in that spree in April, right? So you guys were clear about this. Now look at that measured move just at that bottom. 53.3, not 99.99% precise, but 99% precise. 53.25 is what I was thinking at. But it was 0.35. But still, that point actually shows you volume did come back into the market. So someone other than us agree that this is a good buy for this particular asset. That's one of the reasons why the price actually started bouncing. So now you look at just one thing. You're looking at the historical movements. 
if something has happened once, you're like, okay, fine, I'm learning. Twice, you're like, okay, now you have my attention. Third time, you're like, okay, fine, I get that, I get that. You don't have to go against this. It's just the basics, right? Now we take all of that into the crypto market analysis because remember, when you're here in the market and you see a ton of assets, some of them running up, some of them dropping, don't go crazy. Understand the market dynamics. I get a lot of questions. And when we go through the one-on-one -on -one sessions in the SI family, we actually go through everything in detail based on your portfolio. But right now, I don't know what you have in your portfolio. So I'm giving you a general idea using CoinEx as a platform. So you come here. You're looking at, say, Solana as an ecosystem. You're like, whoa, there are few which are running up in that ecosystem. That's good. If you actually go on to the AI side of it, you're like, yeah, some of them are really fine. They're doing well enough. Now, on the Memcoin side, you would be saying the same. Whoa, they are doing really good. Say, if you want to look at a VAX ecosystem, you're like, okay, hmm. money has not started entering heavy into the, but it's decent. Now, say, most of the members or people usually look at Palkadot ecosystem. We know the Mover, the Glimmer, you know, a lot of these coins. You can look at them individually to get an idea of which part of the market is actually moving. That gives you an idea. Say, some people ask, okay, what are these smart contracts? Like, which one should I actually focus on? <clears throat> because some of these platforms have multiple use cases. Some of them can give you the payments and smart contracts in there. Say, XRP doesn't give you smart contracts recently with the hooks. It actually tried to do that, then Flare and a lot of different stuff. Say, XLM actually enabled that. So once you understand this and you're going through all of these, you kind of get an idea of which area you're in. Because if you are a high-risk guy, you're going on to the NFT side of that and you're looking through the high-risk assets which you want to ride. But keep this in mind, the base idea is to understand which area money is flowing into. Or in other words, in which stream do you see a lot of these coins just running like crazy? That's an easy part you can actually keep in mind. If you look at Memcoin, if you look at AI, you're watching something happening here, there, and all. So you go to Ether as a platform. You want to look at a lot of those ERC-20s. Are they all dropping or are they all running up? Now, it's normal to see three to five, six, seven percent move. It's not a big thing unless you see some bursts like, you know, 30, 40, 50, 80 percent a day in one stream. So you should focus on that to see, do you have smart contracts? Do you have game? Do gaming side? Do you only have payments? If so, that's a problem. So you need to think about it in the basis. And here, this platform actually allows. Now, I haven't actually seen a lot of different platforms giving you this kind of ability to understand this. A lot of people usually ask me, okay, Dan, you know, uh, how can I understand if that's smart contract? How, how can I look at whether that's a mem coin? I'm like, these are the easy tools. In Binance, when you open up, you'll actually see on the left side, right? Similar, use whichever platform you want, but I would say this is one you can use. Now, going into the market, to detail that, Whenever you see too volatile, too risky kind of argument, remember, they have been saying this from a long time. When the price was 400, now, after the market dropped, the price is 63,500. On a short-term horizon, this is what Bitcoin is doing. You had a channel, we had the thought process saying we are inside here. Now we broke to the upside, we are retesting. A bounce above this high confirms that breakout, confirms that trend. So you go higher. Fine. Yeah, that's a short-term scenario. You are looking at microstructures. I don't debate that. It's true. So if you want more certainty about what you're watching, you slowly go on to a higher time frame structure. Whether you go on to a 12-hour, whether you go on to a daily or a weekly, it completely depends on your trading style. If you're trading short term, that's a different story. If you are trading long term, that's a different story. If you are someone who is watching the momentum, who gets in with the momentum, gets out when the candle closes. Showing the momentum is done, you get out, right? 
But what you historically look at is see, are we above the moving average or are we below the moving average? Right now you are at that neutral territory. That's a lot of confusing things the market is giving you. So you go back in history, you look at, okay, when we break the moving average after being below that for some time, what happens? Huh, that looks promising. When you break to the downside, what happens? Or the, what does the market show you there? These are signals which the market actually gives you. You come back down, you retest, you get rejected, then you finally break that to the upside. Huh, ride it. It's going to be helpful. When it's green, get in. When it's red, get out. Easiest way. You can reduce the noise using different uh, tools for this, for sure. But if you do look at this and you go on to a monthly, Bitcoin is still here. Primary concern for me as a human being in the market, I would say getting a monthly close in red would show me there is something wrong with the bullish side of things, at least for a couple of months. That is going to be something you'll have to watch out. Now, the SI family will follow everything through the momentum, everything. So if you do look at this, any time and every time when you're watching a monthly close like this, after the price runs up four, five, six, seven candles, that has happened like this. The only time in the past where you have actually seen a candle which was a fake out was here below the all-time highs. Above in that all-time highs region in a new cycle, you usually don't see that. Whenever you have seen something like that, it has been the local top, right? So here you have what? You stayed there, you didn't go down. The next candle itself went in green. So that's why I say two months, two candles. If you watch those candle closes, which would be the end of May, which would be the end of June, if both of them are red, there is some trouble. You're not going to the upside. Now, easy part, most of us may not actually have the patience to just follow the monthly. Fine, you come on the weekly, and that's where it gets exciting for me. Because the weekly shows you, after four weeks of downside, a month of downside, now the momentum is shifting back to the upside. That's positive. You remain above the moving average, you remain above the all-time highs, and you're trying to bounce back. At the same time, the RSI shows, I'm interested in going back up. We all know what we have talked about. We all seen what we have watched here in the market. How these moving average, the RSI, the price, everything together gives you a little bit more clarity than the vast majority. Now, here you are. This is the altcoin market, excluding Ether. It also gives you that clear perspective, the narrative that you're doing fine. You're doing just okay. The pattern broke to the upside. You're retesting now. You need to have a retest. And then a bounce back higher. Yes, again, it's short-term movements in the market. So if you are concerned about that, I would argue that you slowly zoom out. Not just one leg directly going into weekly. You want to see the market with a little bit of noise and then reduce the noise. So you have one which is a trend line, which broke to the upside, retested and bounced, positive. We're like, okay, I'm, I'm not a fan of those. I'm a fan of levels, support, which turns into resistance, right? So if you do see that level breaking to the upside in terms of strength, uh, easy way. Above 50, consider bulls are re-entering. The price should go back up. Below 50, buyers are slowing down. Sellers are dominating. Mm -hmm. Easy. Now the momentum side of things. You had last daily candle close here. And that candle shows you there was a lot of selling volume involved compared to the candle before. But the size of that daily close is weak. Yes, it is a hammer. And hammers usually give you an idea of there is a lot of liquidity to the upside. So if you do see a couple more of these, yeah. You're going to come back down most likely to this range. It's going to be a retest and a bounce. But if you do see the next daily candle going back above 
this candle, the size of the candle, not the wicks, just the candle, the body of the candle, then bulls are overriding it. But as of now, you already have more volume. And in buying, you're trying to be, make a bigger body. As of now, it's not. So in 24 hours time, if you do see that, it's positive. If not, even if I say it's negative, right? So here, once you understand that as a fact, you won't actually go against the market. Run that daily, you slowly zoom a little bit out onto the three day. You can agree that this was a bullish engulfing candle, which got a follow up here. So on my eyes as a human being here in the market for last eight years, watching this, I would say it's forming a higher low. I like it. If the market is showing me I'm forming a higher low inside a pattern like this and I can break higher soon, uh, I'm interested in what's going to happen after that. It's going to be a micro one, what we have seen before, two and three crazy leg up. Hmm. Okay, if that's true, the one itself is here big. If you do a smaller two, it would look like this. And if you follow the same recent pattern, you're going boom. So I would look for 1.3 to 1.5 trillion dollars for all coins excluding Ether. That's bullish, guys. That's bullish. Now, you come back into the general market. You're like, okay, I understand there's a lot of these buying happening. There's a lot of these coverage happening. There's a lot happening in the market. But be focused. Be focused. There will be a lot of different noise happening in the market. But if you are focusing on, say, one, which is the payment industry, you want to break out in that segment. Because when you go into the market, you'll actually notice there's a lot of these coins which are breaking higher. Do you see a similarity here? Now, the easy way I showed you guys here, like, you know, you go into this platform, you use whichever you want to see. Okay, is that Solana, which is doing now? Yeah, one of them is 100% up, a couple of them like 20, 30, 15. So you have few of them performing. Look, it's going to give you some opportunities. Or you go into the mem coins, you go into the AI, you go into the real world assets. So you actually get to see where money is moving. If it's just a one-off in hundreds of other tokens, uh -uh, don't jump into that industry as a rule. But if you're watching like, a lot of those assets are starting to trend higher. It gives you an idea which direction this is actually going. So use that for your advantage. Say whether it's a BRC20, whether that's ERC20, whichever you use. Now, if you're here and you cannot use that particular platform, you're using, say, Coin Paprika, fine, use it. Look at which of these assets are going up. But you have to identify which asset that is whether that's a mem coin, whether that's a AI, you need to understand that. And then look at how many of these coins are doing well. How many of them actually has a lot of volume? Volume matters. Even if you see an asset doing 100% up a day, but it doesn't have any volume, it's $1,000, don't enter. It's clearly a trap. You don't want to be trapped there. So XRP now shows decent volume, bigger than Doge. Now that's not a achievement here. Yeah? You should have been near with the ether, but you're not. That's a disadvantage for that asset. Now you slowly zoom out and you're watching volume entering into a lot of different assets. Are they performing very well for last 24 hours? No. So in that volume, who is dominating? Say EOS, you can see sellers are dominating. Uh, you want to enter an area where buyers are starting to dominate. That's where you get opportunity to ride it through. So if you are looking for such opportunities, SI family is going to be the right place where the best and most educated crypto family learns on a regular basis. If you want to reach there, you can use the link in the description below to reach me and go through the one-on-one -on -one sessions, go through all the posts, get thousands, if not tens of thousands of posts there. If you like the video, if you received value, smash that like button for me. It supports the growth of the channel. So we're trying to push the channel slowly about 30,000, but we are close to 29. We touch 29 and come back down. We touch 29 and come back down. So if you are there to spread this message, and if you watch till this point, you received some kind of value. That's why you're here. If so, again, smash that like button. I'll meet you on the next video. Bye for now.